But come on now, look at this tiny little grip. I, I got two fingers hanging off, man. Hey guys, this is Steve Huff from stevehuffphoto.com and I'm here today in the park, Peacock Park in Phoenix, Arizona. It's not really the technical name for it, but it's what we call it because there's all kinds of animals roaming around on these grounds, peacocks, chickens, and you know, whatever. Um, but anyway, we're here today. I'm here with my son Brandon who's filming with the Canon M50 and he should be right Hold here. Hold on everybody. And uh, he has the M50 in his hand and I'm filming this with the Canon 1DX Mark II. Now we're here in the park today because I have something. First of all, here's a Canon 24 millimeter F1.4 L lens and it has an adapter on it so we can use it on the Canon M50. Now the M series from Canon is their first at real attempt at a mirrorless camera system. While they have something pro level coming out soon if we, go, if we are to go by the rumors, the M series was their first real attempt and it's actually become quite nice. I really love the M50 for its vlogging capabilities, meaning you can hold it in front of you and talk, you have the swivel screen, and it has that dual pixel autofocus. Uh, more importantly, with that dual pixel autofocus comes the Canon color. Out of the camera, um, the color is, is, is beautiful. You don't have to tweak it, you don't have to color grade it if you don't want to. And finally, the files coming out of the Canon are the most cinematic video looking files I've seen from any camera. So. What really sold me though was the dual pixel AF as well as the out of camera color. And Brandon and I are gonna go take a walk through the park and take some photos. So we went off to take a few snaps, but knowing it was horrendous, uh, the, the daylight, the sunshine, it was super harsh, it was super hot, no one was in the park, all the animals were hiding, so we had nothing to take photos of. So we just shot a few frames with the 50 F1.2 but with the limitations of the M50's one four thousandths of a second shutter speed, it was pretty much impossible to shoot wide open. So after just a few minutes of shooting, I asked Brandon what he thought of shooting the M50 with the 50 f 12 l lens. So far my experience with the, with the M50 has not been that great. Uh, I am shooting midday in Arizona, very bright sun. So right now we're actually shooting the 51.2. Now I know I could go up to 5.6 or whatever and reduce that, that overexposure, but with this lens, I, I want that bokeh in the background. I want that separation from the, from the object that I'm actually shooting. And uh, without an ND filter, I just can't achieve that with this camera because of that four thousandths of a second limit on the M50. Uh, the, the size with the M50 is, <laughs> It's way too tiny for my hands. I don't have big hands, but come on now. Look at this tiny little grip. I've, I got two fingers hanging off, man. The touch screen on this camera, um, there's been a few times already where I've, actually, where I've accidentally slid my thumb. I press it right there, and now my, my focus, or my where I'm gonna focus is now over here. It's, it's a single AF right now, so when I'm taking a shot, it's gonna focus over there, and every single time I gotta tap back in the middle. Now, I know I've been trashing this a lot right now, but it does have some good uses. If you're a vlogger or wanna shoot video, this camera is great for that. Uh, it does have a flip screen back here, so you can see if you're in focus and you can see where your surroundings are. So it's definitely got some uses to it, but for photography, in my opinion, use it for video only, not for photography. So let's see if he changes his mind when we go downtown late at night uh, with some family and Debbie and we're heading downtown to the Lost Leaf and a couple other places to try the M50 with that fast prime to see how it does uh, in very low light conditions. I also brought along the 1DX Mark II which just was amazing uh, in this scenario. But here we are using the M50 and Brandon shooting uh, some performances with it. And I'm gonna share some photos here that he shot with the combination. Now, the limitations we found were, really you don't wanna go over ISO like 3200, maybe 6400, but uh, that's kind of pushing it. Anything over that, you're gonna get a ton of noise. 
and if you have noise reduction on it's going to really make those images look a little plastic I was shooting with it as well and uh, I was finding it a bit laggy and uninspiring but I didn't want to let that take away that it can actually take some pretty nice photos even in these torturous conditions these are low light conditions my friend I mean really low light even my Sony's had trouble in this area so as long as you keep the ISO to 800 that looks good a thousand looks good you know up to, tw to oh, past 2000 it gets a little noisy and weird but it was laggy it was uninspiring um, but even so it can still do a decent job so we took turns shooting uh, the camera taking various photos and I gotta say that 50L is just just as awesome as I remembered it always but after we shot it for a while I asked Brandon what he thought of the camera now after we shot it in low light in a more inspiring environment even though it was an uninspiring camera here are his updated thoughts um, it, it actually performed pretty well with this lens um, of course this lens is a 1.2 so it's great in low light um, in low light conditions it seemed to get really laggy almost <laughs> almost unusable in some circumstances you could try to focus and it would glitch around everywhere and it's just not going to be capable so you mean you mean the EVF was very laggy yeah yeah just, just about seeing anything I mean even even on the main on the main screen over here it was still really laggy um, so for a beginner camera it is very capable I personally think it's better for video still but if this is all you got then it can definitely get the job done before we go further into the night I want to share some photos I shot with the 1DX Mark II to show you how much different uh, these professional cameras are now of course this camera is $5,500 this image was shot at ISO 8000 and the color is so nice and it's so clean Here's one shot at 25,600 using the 16 to 35 as the artist was doing her sound check. Um, here's another one, 25,600. Uh, it doesn't look bad at all. And I'm going to show you a few more at this extreme ISO. As I said, this is low light territory. Uh, this one might be ISO 16,000. This one here is a 25,600. The 1DX2 had no issue with focus. It was lightning quick, no focus assist needed. It just locked on and fired away and gave very pleasing results with the 50 F12L lens. So uh, shooting the NX 1DX Mark II was like a totally different animal, a totally different experience as is to be expected. The M50 is an entry level and for entry level and five, 600 bucks, I'm going to tell you what I think of it here coming up soon, but we ended up going out uh, to another place to dance and have some fun and, and just have a good time. And then uh, it was time to wrap up this little fun test of using the M50. So here's my thoughts about what this camera is and who it's for. Okay, so I'm using the M50 right now with its built-in mics. I don't even have an external mic on it so you can hear what the audio sounds like if you don't want to add a mic. But I feel this camera is best, is really best for shooting video and more specifically vlogging. It has the flip out screen, it has the touch controls where you can change. So while I'm looking at myself here, I can tap my face to focus, but it's actually locked on my face because I'm using face detection and the dual pixel AF on this camera is amazing, especially with video. It's going to track my face any way I move it. So while we shot this for photos in the daytime, in bright light, harsh light, we saw the limitations of the one four thousandths of a second shutter speed. We shot this at night. We saw some of the limitations of the highest ISO, uh, which brought in image noise, even when using a 50 F12 lens. Now this camera is great for, I think, what it's made for is shooting HD video for vloggers. Canon even sells a kit that comes with a microphone and you're all ready to go. This will shoot 4K, but I don't recommend it as a 4K camera due to that crazy, extreme, ridiculous crop. I will never use this for 4K um, because of that crop and it makes it unusable for me. Uh, the, the body has uh, image stabilization, so if you turn it on with a lens like this, it's going to crop in a little bit, but it's going to give you buttery, smooth 
uh, video. Uh, so if you're using it with a little handle, I'm using it with a little mini tabletop tripod so I can carry it around and shoot video as well. So at the end of the day, this $600 Canon, I feel is a vlogger's dream. It's the best YouTube camera you can get if you don't want to spend a fortune. So the M50 is actually a fantastic camera for the money if you want to vlog, if you want to shoot videos, take family vacation videos, what have you. And again, this is without any mic, so you can hear what the built-in mics sound like. And one thing that's really cool is the mics are in the front of the camera. So there's one on the left, one on the right. So instead of having them on the top, as most cameras do, they're aimed right at your voice. So it should be picking up my voice pretty nicely. Um, overall, the Canon M50 is a great buy for 600 for video. Think of it as photography secondary with this camera.